Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Augusti Nozu. I'm the Trade Advisor for Digital and Education with the Department for International Trade here in Accra, Ghana. I will be your moderator for today's webinar. Today's webinar is focused on Ghana's digitalization agenda and the UK's private sector expertise. The government of Ghana has set out an ambitious digitalization agenda. The UK and Ghana has agreed to collaborate on six priority areas, including digital, at the UK-Ghana Business Council meeting, which is a very high-level meeting between both countries. The UK continues to show its commitment to support Ghana on their digitalization agenda, including with policy support and also lining up the UK's private sector expertise. But today, would have representatives from the government of Ghana telling us about Ghana's broad digital agenda and also representatives from the private sector talking us through the different digital projects that they are embarking on. I will now introduce Lindsay Gilbert Crouch, who is the country director for the Department for Inter International Trade here in Accra, Ghana. Lindsay, over to you. Good morning everyone and a very warm welcome to today's webinar hosted by the UK's Department for International Trade and the UK Ghana Chamber of Commerce. My name is Lindsay Gilbert Crouch and I am the Country Director for the UK's Department for International Trade. The Department for International Trade works to promote the UK private sector overseas and champion free trade. In Ghana, our sectors of focus include digital, education, infrastructure and financial services. All of this is underpinned by the implementation of the new UK-Ghana Trade Partnership Agreement signed earlier this year. Digital is an incredibly important part of the UK-Ghana Economic Partnership and is one of the six core areas that our governments collaborate on via our UK-Ghana Business Council. The topic of today's webinar is Ghana's digitalisation agenda and the UK's digital sector expertise. This webinar will give us the opportunity to hear about government's digitisation ambitions and specifically a number of key priority projects being implemented by both government and the private sector. The UK's reputation as a global digital hub is well known. We have the highest number of tech unicorns in Europe and digital contributes more than 149 billion to the UK economy every year. We believe that the UK and Ghana have much to offer one another in the digital space. I'm delighted to introduce you to our esteemed panellists who will be sharing their expertise and experience with us today. Kweku Athia Adu. He is the Senior Advisor to the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, Professor of Strategy, Fellow of the Ghana Academy of Arts and Scientists and former Dean of the Business School of Central University. Previously, he was Head of Policy Coordination, Monitoring and Evaluation at the Office of the President and Chairman of the Oil and Gas Technical Committee. Professor Apia Adu has also served on various boards in the public and private sectors. Then we will hear from Richard Ochere Fosu. Richard Ochere Fosu is the Director General for the National Information Technology Agency. Prior to this role, he was Associate Director for one of Africa's biggest investment banks. He has worked with the Ministry of Defence, Command Information Centre in the UK and with the United States Patent and Trademark Office as a Programme Director. Finally, we will hear from Kwame Asamoah. He has extensive experience in the telecommunications sector spanning over eight years in infrastructure, project management, sales, emerging technology and product development. Kwame is currently the product manager of Internet of Things and digital platforms for Vodafone Business Solutions Ghana. He holds a BSc in telecommunications engineering. Thank you so much to all of our panellists and our moderator for making time for this important discussion. And thank you to the UK Ghana Chamber of Commerce for their organisation of today's event. And thank you to all of you for making time to attend. I look forward to a rich discussion. Thank you so much, Lindsay, for those remarks. Next, I would introduce to you the UK High Commissioner to Ghana, Harriet Thompson, to give her opening remarks. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining today's webinar. Particular thanks to our highly esteemed panel members, 
My name's Harriet Thompson. I'm the British High Commissioner designate to Ghana. The purpose of today's webinar is to hear the story of Ghana's digitalisation and to create connections with the private sector who have such an important role to play in making that a success story. This webinar gives us the opportunity to hear about the government of Ghana's digital strategy and their various digital projects and we'll also hear about other opportunities from the private sector. Today's seminar is particularly relevant in the context of COVID-19 which has pushed all of us in how we do things in both our working and domestic lives. Throughout the world, the introduction and improvement of new and innovative technologies has helped make our lives better. Since the pandemic hit early last year, digital technology has been the solution that individuals, companies and countries have turned to as they've navigated the roadblocks created by the pandemic. Through digitalization, factories were kept working, families and loved ones kept in touch with each other, and teachers were still able to pass on knowledge to their students. Digitalization wasn't a panacea by any stretch, but it did ensure that our lives didn't come to a complete halt, and for that, I for one am grateful. As we build back from the pandemic, leveraging digital technology will allow us to build back better. Here in Ghana, the UK government continues to support Ghana's economic growth agenda, and I'm happy to say that digital is one of six key areas of the economy on which UK and Ghanaian governments have decided to collaborate. This was agreed at the UK Ghana Business Council, co-chaired by His Excellency the Vice President of Ghana and the UK's Minister for Africa, demonstrating that even at the highest levels, our two countries understand how important the digital sector is for economic growth. This government to government cooperation is important, but so too is the contribution of the private sector, and I'm proud to be able to showcase the UK private sector's capability. Let me use some statistics to make the point and demonstrate our digital strength. First, studies have shown the UK to be the fourth most technology in the world. Number two, the UK's digital technology turnover in 2019 amounted to £151 billion. Number three, UK VC investment in tech is third in the world, hitting a record high of $15 billion in 2020, behind only the USA and China. And last one, the UK's tech startup and scale up ecosystem is valued at £585 billion. But I'm sure I don't need to persuade today's audience of the value of digital. I hope you all find today's webinar useful and that it piques your interest in Ghana's digital sector. Thank you. Harriet, thank you so much for speaking to us. I would now introduce to you Her Majesty's Trade Commissioner for Africa, Emma Wade-Smith. Emma? Hello, I'm Emma Wade-Smith, the UK's Trade Commissioner for Africa, and I am absolutely delighted to welcome you to today's webinar. This webinar series has been brought together by a partnership between the UK's Department for International Trade's Ghana team and the UK Ghana Chamber of Commerce. And this ser series is not just designed to help you stay in touch during these difficult times, but actually to provide you with some practical information on topical issues. So this series is going to cover issues like business resilience, how to build back better, cleaner, greener, more resiliently, the opportunities that, that abound in Ghana on education, infrastructure, financial and professional services, how to maintain momentum on digital adoption, and indeed how engaging with diaspora can help you achieve your business objectives. As the UK's Trade Commissioner for Africa, I lead trade and investment teams across 23 African countries. We look at providing trade continuity, uh, tackling market access barriers, and indeed promoting trade and investment opportunities. And Ghana is a really important business partner for us. We have a great long-term partnership between Ghana and the UK, and I know that we can do even better. I know that times now are tougher than most of us have ever experienced in our lives. And as part of the UK government, we, the Department for International Trade, are here to work with you to help you achieve your business goals and hopefully to inspire more UK companies to think about coming to do business in Ghana. We are here to help. So the purpose of this webinar and indeed the whole webinar series is to share strategies, best practice, insights uh, and to provide a platform uh, for questions, 
uh, for discussion and for sharing of knowledge. I do hope that you'll find today's webinar useful and please do get in touch with the Ghana Trade and Investment Team to follow up. Thank you. Thank you so much, Emma, for those words. Just a quick reminder that today's webinar is brought to us by the UK Ghana Chamber of Commerce. You can follow them on social media and you will see their details on your screen now. For those interested in becoming members, you should be able to reach out to Margaret, whose details is on the screen as well. I will now introduce to us our first speaker for today. Professor Kweku Apieedu. He will be speaking to us about the digital strategies for the government of Ghana and the number of the projects that they are embarking on. Thank you, Augustine, for that introduction and also for the opportunity to be part of this program. Now, you have asked me to talk about Ghana's digital transformation agenda. And so that's exactly what I'll do over the next few minutes. We in Ghana have embarked on a highly ambitious program to transform our economy through digital initiatives. And since the government, Nana Kufuaru's government came into power in 2017, there have been quite a number of initiatives along this line. We started with the National Identification Program because it's very important to know who the people in the nation are and to be able to identify them. So that was one of the very first initiatives that we undertook. And then we went on to examine the digital address system in Ghana that makes it possible for you to know the location of everyone in the country. Then we went on to look at how financial transactions can be used to transform the economy and to bring a lot more people from the informal sector to the formal sector and to help us also to be able to generate revenue internally, that is enhancing internal revenue mobilization. And then we went on to look at how we could also use all these different transformative initiatives in such a way that they become integrated so that we are able to provide the necessary services for the citizens of this country. Uh, what we did then was to link the national identification program to the address and system, to the banking system, and then to government services such as taxes, and then also link it to other services such as obtaining your license, and then also obtaining a passport, registering a business. And so there are many other tentacles that we have developed along these lines. As we speak, we are getting ourselves ready also to look at land digitalization in Ghana and then property taxation in Ghana. That's all part of the process of making it easier for people to do business in Ghana and also to help us to have an integrated system uh, by way of governance, operationalization, and making it easy for people to be able to do business without necessarily traveling. And I believe that COVID has made it very clear to us that the only way forward is for any economy and any country to digitalize. And that's that's exactly what we've been doing. So, so let me just go straight to the point and itemize a few of these areas. And I would say that this is not the whole of the blueprint, but what the ministries, that is communications and a stakeholders deemed necessary for the next few years. So one of the initiatives which we have in there is to take an inventory of all government digital assets and services. It's very important that we are able to do this to help us to establish a, a comprehensive government-wide database 
and register as a reference platform a management system for all government digital assets. Also to develop government digital assets management framework. It's very, very important that we know the assets that we have within the digital space and to be able to come up with a program to manage these assets. Second, which we have for implementation is to enhance ICT utilization within our institutions. The capability of these institutions as far as ICT is concerned, the competencies of the people who work in there, the skills and digital readiness of the people and the institutions. This would help us to prepare a digital readiness and skills gap analysis report and then operationalize public sector learning management system and knowledge center system. The next which we have is to expedite and consolidate public projects on smart workplace, national ID, the digital address system which we are still implementing to complete, our land records, beds and desk reg registry, which is the last piece that we have in our total digital transformation project, because what we're going to do with our national ID, our digital address system, land records, interoperability, is to be able to bring all these different areas together in a complete and an integrated manner so that we are able to identify people, we're able to provide services, we're able to plan better, we're able to distribute our resources in such a way that everybody in the nation benefits comprehensively. We also have the Ghana.gov, which enables citizens to be able to undertake services from the comfort of their living rooms so that you don't have to go to the tax office to pay your taxes. You don't have to go to the passport office to complete your forms as such. You can do all that same with DVLA, Drivers and Vehicle Licensing, same with National Health. You can renew your license um, right from home. And then other government services can also be provided along the lines of Ghana.gov. Health records digitization. When I go to the hospital, it's possible for them to just press the button and get all my records instead of going through hard paper. And then also to help to create virtual platforms or virtual learning platforms across government. The next item which we have, which is the fourth that I'll mention is for us to be able to develop the regulatory capacity of the National Information Technology Agency to become an authority and the legislative instruments for the Electronic Transactions Act of the National Information Technology Agency Act. We want to be able to develop all these things and get our NITA, which is our National Information Technology Agency, to work as effectively as it was created to be in the first place. Then we also have a very important component of our digital transformation agenda, which which would come in very handy and help us to stay in the digital highway and become the preferred destination for technological innovation and investments in the area of technology in Africa, not only in West Africa, but in Africa. And that is, we are putting together government's fiber assets across institutions. The Volta River Authority, which is our lead generation company, electricity generation company in Ghana has fiber assets. Electricity Company of Ghana, which is the lead distribution company in the energy sector has fiber assets. Gridco, which is the only transmission company in the electricity sector, also has fiber assets. So you can see that the whole power sector across each of the big organizations has fiber assets. Ghana Gas, which provides power for electricity generation and also for non-power demand, also has fiber assets. 
the, the Bureau of National Communications, which has to do more with security in the nation, has fiber assets. Then the Ghana Investments for Electronic Communications also has fiber assets. We want to be able, well, there are others as well, such as the Ministry of Defense. We want to be able to bring together all these fiber assets into a common pot. Because instead of operating our silos, it's better that we have them in a common port to obtain synergies and to be able to know the quantum of fiber assets that we have as a country. If we are to become a digital highway, we need fiber assets that are affordable to use, reliable, fast, and widespread throughout the country. So the in this country, we do not create a digital divide between those who live in the rural areas and those who live in the urban areas. So fiber must become available everywhere and we should be able to transact business electronically without any challenges, irrespective of where you are in this country. And we're talking about speed, affordability, so the price must be good. And we are talking also about reliability. So at all times, we must be up and doing. Connectivity must be 99.999%, if not 100%. So that is also another exercise that we are undertaking. The next one is a common national digital architecture should be designed and implemented, at least phase one of it. So the National Digital Architecture Operation Center must be equipped with the requisite tools and systems. So we are expecting the national information, national information technology agency to be the lead agency to manage and operate the national digital architecture. And then we are expecting the Ghana Integrated Digital Transformation Blueprint to be implemented. And there are aspects of this we can start in phases. And so we are looking at raising funds and millions of dollars in grants and technical support from development partners who can work with us to operationalize the blueprint, to generate millions of US dollars in project financing within the context of public private partnerships, coordinate the implementation of the Integrated Digital Transformation Blueprint, its implementation, quality control, monitoring, evaluation, and continuous evolution. And then roll out the Int Integrated Digital Transformation Blueprint interactive web portal to provide global and local access to woo investors and tell the story of Ghana's digitization journey. And then last but one, is the creation of employment and promoting entrepreneurship. Currently, we have the Accra Digital Center, which is probably where most of the focus is, is, is uh, at the moment in terms of funding and also seeing results, getting people to go in there, churning out ideas, et cetera, et cetera. But we expect to extend the same service and concept to other cities in Ghana. We have it in Kumasi already, but what we want to do is to upgrade the center we have in Kumasi, Tamale, Sunyang, Sekandi Taprade, original innovation centers. We want to be able to upgrade all these original innovation centers to digital centers that are the same standard and class as the one we have in Accra. And of these initiatives, one would ask, where are we going to get resources from, the money from, to be able to realize our dream? The Ministry of Finance has made a strong commitment to the Ministry of Communications and Digitalization that based on effective implementation of the blueprint, funding will always be made available because digital transformation was recognized by the president as the cornerstone for us to get out of the mess that most of economies in this world have gotten into due to COVID. 
So the Minister of Finance has, has made a strong and an unwavering commitment to the Ministry and the Minister of Communications and Digitalization that anything that has to do with digital, digital transformation will be treated as priority in budget releases. And so we expect that to happen and to support the Ministry of Communications and Digitalization to deliver its commitments and targets under the Ghana Cares program a budget of 131 million Ghana CDs. You divide that by six, and probably you're looking at something a bit more than 20 million US dollars would be made available to the Ministry of Communications as long as it is recognized that implementation is on course, results are being achieved, returns are being submitted, and we're seeing a trajectory in the outcomes or the, like the outputs, the outcomes of the various programs under the Ghana Cares Pillars, uh, as far as we see results coming through. So I would end at this point and say that these are some of the highlights of the initiatives that we are undertaking in Ghana to help us to realize our digital transformation. Most of the initiatives that we are undertaking are truly innovative and we believe that we will surely be recognized as one of the leading African countries pursuing the concept, the dream and the realities of digital transformation as we seek to place our economy on a new pedestal. Thank you very much. Prof, thank you so much for speaking to us today. Um, another quick reminder that today's session is brought to us by the UK Ghana Chamber of Commerce. And please feel free to follow them on social media and reach out to them if you are interested in becoming a member. Our next presenter is Richard Ochi Fosu, who is the Director General for the National Information Technology Agency, NITA. NITA is under the Ministry of Communications here in Ghana. Richard will be speaking to us about the different projects NITA is rolling out and the opportunities available for UK companies to partner them to deliver on. Thank you, Augustine, for the introduction. Um, my name is Richard from NITA, which is the National Information Technology Agency. We are the government agency for regulating the ICT space. So under the Ministry of Communications and Digitalization. So effectively, government CIO, if you like. And uh, I'd like to talk about a couple of things that we are doing here uh, at NITA and under the ministry. Um, obviously, Ghana's digital uh, journey has come a long way uh, from the point where we were just digitizing from analog to maybe digital format to now basically adding value to that digital format uh, to actually improve on business efficiencies. Um, so digitalization is where we are in our digital, digital transformation journey. And notably, we've done a couple of projects that would uh, allow us to, with the introduction of mobile money, which is um, doing very well. And uh, in terms of mobile money transactions in Ghana, it is really, 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 the numbers are very high and is doing extremely well. Uh, using QR codes for transactions for businesses is also doing extremely well. Uh, more, now, uh, our digital national ID uh, card system uh, really underpins all the things that we are doing because Knowing your, knowing who you are dealing with, knowing your digital ID also allows us to do, actually do business with you. So basically encompassing all this is to ensure that our digital journey uh, is automated and uh, is transparent and efficient. Uh, I wanted to speak to you about a couple of uh, projects that we've undertaken here. Uh, so some of the things that we are doing is our e-services platform particularly or notably the Ghana.gov platform, which allows citizens to be able to consume government services, um, sorry, discover government services, consume it and pay for it. 
using any form of payment, whether it's through online banking, whether it's through mobile money transaction, uh, or walking into a bank to make this payment. This has actually helped um, and is really allowed uh, businesses uh, who come into Ghana or people who are interested in doing business in Ghana to be able to discover government services. Um, one of the other things that I think um, technology has also helped us to do uh, is this our livelihood empowerment against poverty pro program, uh, which is LEAP, which allows government to help uh, poor households with health insurance and cash. And we do this uh, using mobile money. So we actually transfer uh, whatever help government has uh, to these citizens through mobile money uh, transactions. Uh, and I think as we develop, we are even thinking that pensions should be should be should be paid uh, to to citizens or pensioners directly without having to uh, for them to come to the bank, go to the offices to struggle. So that that two way communication between government and citizens uh, is also very important. So what what can I say? Technology ICT contributes about three point six percent to the country's GDP. Uh, which can can be improved on, uh, and I think that is the pitch that we are also making to uh, uh, our folks in the UK and the diaspora that Ghana is also prime and ready. Uh, we have the standards. Uh, there are projects that are happening. I'll mention some of them uh, in my presentation so that you know you can come and participate and partner with government to get these things going. Um, we also, until recently, also run a national data center and the Eastern Corridor Fiber Asset. Um, these are opportunities for, for companies who are looking to come to Ghana. Um, we've recently had Main One, which is a major player, come and establish uh, a data center in Ghana. Um, we, you, cannot, you cannot have enough data centers. Uh, so businesses who are interested in, uh, in putting up that infrastructure are very welcome uh, because cloud is prevalent now. And, uh, you know, as I said, you can never have enough data centers for people to use. And Ghana seem to be pushing, uh, we are pushing for Ghana to be the hub for technology. So I think this is an important part. Connectivity, the foundational block for everything we are talking about. Uh, without the connectivity, um, all these e initiatives will not will not really bode well. Uh, so therefore, there are pockets in the country. Obviously, the mobile telephony companies have done their bit. Government is also doing their bit. Uh, uh, we also have a fund that actually looks at the rural telephony project. Um, but all in all, there's space for people to come in and you know participate in this space and also leverage. Even there are companies in Ghana that have fiber assets that we can consolidate and uh, commercialize so that everybody uses that. I mean, this is something British Telecom did in the UK, whereby nowadays uh, Richard Branson and his, uh, and his Virgin Empire can boast of a Virgin Mobile uh, b without erecting a single uh, tower. So, so that, that infrastructure uh, is something that it's open and uh, we encourage um, private participants uh, to work with government to also do that. Um, we, are, we are very interested in sanitizing the ecosystem to ensure that we, we give a, a, an equal playing field for uh, private partners who want to come and play in the space. Uh, as I said, government is, uh, is creating an enabling environment for private sector to survive and to thrive in this space. So our job is to regulate and make sure that standards are followed and everything is done as it should. Some of the projects that we've uh, undertaken um, looks at the digital skills and research innovation. This is a space that um, I, I, would, I would ask and I'll put it out there that companies interested in, um, in this area uh, can also look at. We have a very youthful uh, uh, citizen. Uh, we, are, we are a very young country, 
uh, and technology is also very big here. Uh, so companies that are interested in training people, BPO, uh, business process outsourcing is some of the areas that can be looked at. Once upon a time, we had a, a thriving BPO uh, sector here uh, where I think companies were even transcribing medical records uh, for US uh, hospitals. Um, you know, help desk, contact centers. These are areas that can be looked at. And Ghana has um, the, 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 the resources uh, to be able to do this in terms of human capital, as well as uh, the infrastructure to be able to do so. Um, I would also like to talk about uh, some of the projects that government is also doing. So um, is participating in, and maybe that can also uh, strike a chord with uh, our diaspora um, companies who may want to participate in Ghana. So we are building a government cloud, a G cloud, which would allow um, institutions in Ghana not to necessarily go to uh, the, the Amazons of this world uh, and, and the Microsofts, of the Azures of this world, but basically to try and also have a cloud in country where we can minimize data cost as well as data sovereignty issues uh, through data protection and all those things. So government cloud is also something big that we are looking at. I mentioned Ghana.gov, it's a fantastic platform that is really helping government cut out corruption and middlemen because everything is done directly with government institutions, payments are known and government at any point in time can see um, it's money because it's swept into the consolidated account. We also have a project on public key infrastructure. This is a very um, important uh, infrastructure uh, when it comes to uh, authentication of, of, of our cyberspace. Uh, so we are working with uh, our passport services and national ID uh, who all leverage this uh, key infrastructure to do what they need to do. Uh, we are also currently working on a project that consolidates uh, traffic management. Uh, we have different actors in the space, uh, but right now we are trying to create a consolidated traffic management system where we can we can bring some sanity on our on our roads. Uh, red light violations and ticketing would be prevalent uh, because nowadays, if you are fined, uh, you are you are given an opportunity to uh, use the court system to. Uh, basically uh, put your case forward, but if not, you pay for the fine and we bring some sanity. Um, we are collaborating with the passport office and national ID uh, to actually activate uh, a passport module on our on our national ID card, uh, first for ECOWAS traveling and then uh, for global uh, traveling as well. With, with COVID, um, we also uh, introduce a platform called Smart Workplace, which I'm currently using uh, the Teams component of it, which allows all MDAs and MMDAs to be able to work from home. This is government's virtual workspace. Uh, they can work anywhere, anytime, any place. Uh, and this is also another initiative that government has actually put out. Um, in all this, all the technology that we are doing, all the digitization effort is also underpinned by our enterprise architecture. Um, and this is key because it tells, it gives the standards and the framework for doing things. Uh, so um, this is also one, one of the big things that we are making sure that all government agencies actually adhere to the government enterprise architecture. Um, learning management system also uh, became a big deal when COVID happened. Uh, so we needed to put systems in place for students to be able to, uh, you know, attend lectures online and, and be able to examine online. So this is something that we are also doing. Finally, I also mentioned that government has also, to try and not leave anyone behind, has embarked on a, a rural telephony uh, project just to basically connect the rural folks uh, so that they can also participate in what we are doing. Um, and um, we are also providing ICT labs for schools and allowing them to be able to do that. There's e-procurement system, e-health and telemedicine solutions that we are working with Ghana Health Service on. 
and expanding the e-justice system uh, and e-parliament. So all in all, um, Ghana is ready to partner with um, private partners in the UK uh, who are looking to diversify and look at Ghana uh, as a destination for uh, investment. Uh, and within the ICT space, uh, as I said, um, with AFTA being, being located here, uh, AFTA having its headquarters here, um, I think this is the gateway to get to the continent as well. So these are, this, this, these are important times and very interesting times. Uh, so again, just to quickly conclude, um, you know, training and skill set development is also a very big thing. Investments in this area, such as uh, robust infrastructure, uh, I talked about network, I talked about data centers, uh, and then as I said, uh, the Africa, African continental free trade area is situated here. And that is a gateway to the continent. With this said, I thank you very much for your time and for hearing me. Thank you very much. Richard, thank you so much for that. Our final presenter for today is Mr. Kwame Asamoa. He is with Vodafone Ghana and will be presenting to us their upcoming projects, including with the Ministry of Education. Kwame. Thank you very much, um, Augustine, for that introduction. As he said, I am responsible for um, culture, health and education in terms of digital propositions and digital platforms, plus IoT, what we call the Internet of Things for Vodafone Ghana. And so as a company, we've been able to understand the framework of how we should behave in developing countries like Ghana and other places where we exist like Kenya, Tanzania, etc., and how to deploy digital propositions that helps to drive governments and economies in where we operate. And this is in the sense that these three key channels of every economy is what drives it. The children will have to eat, and that's why our culture comes in. They will have to go to school, education plays in there. And there was always the need for health, especially in these times that are not normal times. And this applies across every social structure and formation in every country that you can think of. So now we can move on to the prepared slides so that you have an understanding of what we have been able to do and develop as a company. So our mezzanine platform is so named because I mean, on, on a building or in a building, the mezzanine floor is what joins where people usually live from the first floor upwards to a utility floor. So think of it as Lego, it's something that binds um, all aspects of the building together. And therefore the mezzanine platforms are built in such a way that they can easily be broken apart or, or put into customized to be deployed wherever it is needed. And we're looking at the segments of agriculture, healthcare and education. And so the Vodafone Group has spent some time, some energy and some finances to develop digital platforms that can tackle these three key areas of any developing nation, a great healthcare and education. And it's also riding on the fact that mobility is now the norm where you have people even in the rural areas having multiple phones, one or two, and having access to the mobile network and mobile technology, be it on the YAM phone, which is the feature phones, as we call them here, or the smartphone. And therefore, the last mile is covered. You should be able to reach virtually every individual on a mobile network. And this is where we make it more beautiful as Vodafone, where we've been able to deploy an agnostic platform. So regardless of the network that you're on, whether if it's a competitor, MTN or Airtel, you still you should still be able to use any of these platforms on the mezzanine suit. And we've opened the gate. I mean, this is openness on our part to be able to deploy these platforms wherever they are needed. Now, in the past, what we've realized is that people build platforms in silos and to end very bespoke platforms to suit what their needs are. So if somebody is deploying vaccines, for instance, they will go spend some time to deploy a platform just for that purpose and just for that organization, something that you cannot really share. But what we've been able to do is to have in the present, develop these platforms because we're doing it in multiple countries. 
it's a shared service. So you should be able to deploy whatever lessons and positive actions that we've had in another country and use it in Ghana, for instance, if it is required. So even Kenya, they developed something quite sensible in the field of agriculture, for instance, and would require it in the cocoa segment in Ghana. That is something I can, I should be able to take and deploy in the Ghanaian environment. And that's what we're thinking about, sharing that information, making it open and spreading knowledge across um, the continent through the mezzanine platform. And so when you take up any African establishment or settlement, you realize that these three pillars are what binds or moves that community. Agriculture because everybody has to eat, education because we need to learn, we need to learn how to read and write and able to develop ourselves as a people. And healthcare because we're humans, we're mankind, we're always going to get sick and therefore we should be able to take care of ourselves, manage our healthcare systems quite well. So the first step is agriculture, where we are opening it up with the digital platforms to allow the farmers to have easy access to the markets, bringing the buyer and the farmer onto the same platform, ensuring trust, assuring quality, where we are deploying QOC levels on these platforms. So whatever the buying, the buyer is getting on the field, he or she can actually do quality assessment before it gets into the warehouse. Farmers, subsistence farmers as a whole, require financing of a sort in the beginning of the season. The ability to put these farmers in a KYC or a database to identify the farmer, age, sex, what kind of land he's, he's planting on, the crops they're planting, getting all these required information and then putting it onto the harvest levels, what is expected out of the acreage that he's planting, for instance, is good news for the financial institutions because then they have data that they can stand on to give loans and financial structures to these farmers, enabling the farmers to improve uh, their yield, for instance, improve the way they farm and produce more at the end of the day. Access to information is also very important to these farmers. So we're looking at how we can deploy weather information. It was a fall army worm infestation, for instance. How do we get this information directly to these farmers to inform them of new changes that are happening in pesticides and chemical usage on these farms to the level of fertilizers, getting the information quickly to the last mile. And it's, it, this is able to be done because we are deploying these on mobile phones. We're using the mobile phones and the tablets as the last mile to get to the farmer because he or she is connected onto a mobile network and therefore we should be able to get information to that farmer where it is required, when it is required. And you realize that with access to finance as a telco, we've also developed a very good digital payment platform for the phone cash and therefore transactions can also be done digitally. We are taking away paper. People have phones in their hands and therefore we are deploying those phones to be able to communicate with them and build a business, a social intervention business in that regard. In health, we're looking at vaccine management. This was built a long time ago before COVID, but we realized that it's really helped. South Africa is using the mezzanine platform for their COVID deployment in terms of vaccines to get to the people who know who has been vaccinated, etc. as per their programs. Stock management is what we are talking about. The fact that in the health sector, there is no need for an emergency. That medicine has to be in that dispensary where it is required. So if you've got stock in the regional hospital, you should be able to know that this stock is there. This one is going to be expired. And this is where it is needed, the district hospital, for instance. And therefore, you should be able to link up with your logistics team and move that stock where it is required. In that case, we're preventing the cases where medicines become redundant, expired, just because they were not moved to the right place at the right time. We've also understood that in Africa and Ghana, for instance, community health care is very important for us. And deploying these community health nurses who are at the forefront, the food soldiers on the ground, dealing with the mothers, providing vaccines, dealing with children being born and taking care of them, putting them on a digital platform where they can update, do their surveys, do their records and input all these data onto a virtual database that can be accessed on the web, on the regional or national level is very important to our strategies and platform. And we deploy these in areas like Kenya, Tanzania and South Africa and it's working pretty well, even to the level of educating um, these community health nurses. Education is another pillar and therefore school management where we are able to put the school into a database, know how many teachers are in that school, how many children are in that school, 
segmented by gender, girls and boys, and track these students as they move from primary one to the exit the education system. These are platforms and in cases like Kaduna where we deploy them, it's able to let them remove the problem of ghost names and a bigger problem of ghost schools, with ghost teachers, etc. And therefore saving the government a lot of money because the money is no more going into the drain. You know exactly what is there, where where it is and, and the capacity that you have as a school. And therefore the funds are managed properly. And this is just because, again, basing the digital platform on a mobile service. Have the add on of the mobile learning to enable remote learning wherever you're located in the country. So the hinterland is no more a problem. So far as you have a mobile phone or connectivity, you should be able to access this. And then also combining health to education because vaccines are actually quite deployed in young children, in the kindergartens, in the crutches. And therefore having all these schools on a single database allows you to do these programs quite quickly because you have the information where and where you need it. So powered by mezzanine, these three pillars are what we cater for. In our Greek, we're looking at connected farmer, where we're connecting the farmers to the buyers and putting them on a single platform. Subsidy programs are also something that we look at at our e-subsidy management, where we give vouchers, digital vouchers, removing paper, making it a cashless system. Logistics management is also part of agriculture. That's one part of the platform. In the health sector, we're using the stock and supply management, health worker management, even taking education with the health worker to the last mile, mobile learning, mobile surveillance, vaccine management, knowing where the vaccine is, how many are in stock, and even the right temperature to ensure that we don't break cold chains. So we're even deploying IoT in centers and some of these platforms and then patient support. In education, we're looking at the school management, mobile learning, and other communication tools. What is required for success for us is quite simple. The ability to, to design, look at the problem, ideate, put some improvements on it. And then when we come into deployment, we are like to take care of the hosting. Everything is in the cloud. And therefore the burden of finding physical service, the cost of all that is something that we remove. Training the trainer as part of what we do to ensure that adoption is done. Because no matter how beautiful the digital platform is, if the users are not going to adopt it and accept the change, it's going to fail. And therefore we've understood that whenever we deploy this and something that um, we use and, and deploy. Second line support, first line support is something that we always do to make sure that whatever platforms we bring on board are sustainable, people can use them, they accept it, it is adopted into the system. And the efficiency is actually increased in all these um, three key areas and the client B is the government or large NGO, for instance, has the responsibility to, to actually do training of the end users. We ensure that after training the trainer, ensure the user adoption and then the first line support so that they are part of it, they own it, and therefore it's easy for these platforms to be deployed. And I say with the technology that we're building, we've made it quite agnostic. And this is quite new in the telecom um, industry where we've opened it up for the fact that you don't need to have a Vodafone SIM in that smartphone or that tablet to use the platform. Regardless of where you are or what connectivity that you have, you should still be able to use this platform. And this is a quite a new thing in our industry. So security is very important for us, identity, mobile learning, reporting, putting the data collection into one workflow is what we look at in the mezzanine platform. Our partner services, for instance, in agriculture, the payment platforms called Impesa elsewhere here is called Vodafone Cash, vouchering, the development on the platform that is in the green zone, and the channels to market. How do you get to the people? By SMS, by USSD, by the app, and even by IVR, which is voice in certain instances, and the ability to also merge in legacy client systems, because people are doing stuff on Excel and other platforms. The ability to have open APIs to connect all of these things to merge and make it work is a strength that we also have. And then the core mobile network services is what we rely on to make sure that everything works. So in a just as a telecom company, we're moving and shifting the paradigm to become a technology advisory company, deploying a platform as a service, software as a service, where it is needed, especially in the three key areas of our Greek health and then agriculture. So that is it for us from Vodafone. Um, so yeah, big thank you for your time. And 
me taking you through our mezzanine um, platform for you to understand what we are doing in our digital space. Thank you. Kwame, thanks again and thank you to all our presenters. Um, we are now going to the question and answer session. Um, just a quick reminder that you can um, write your questions in the chat bar. Um, there are quite a number of questions in here and I would, I would direct them to the appropriate presenter. Before I do that, uh, special thanks again to the UK Ghana Chamber of Commerce for delivering this webinar. Um, you should be able to contact them once they post um, their details on the screens shortly. But I'll go to a question now, which is directed at Professor Kweku. Um, the question says, how will, how will government be able to measure success for the different digital initiatives it's implementing? Um, I'll take that again. How will government be able to measure success for the different digital initiatives it is implementing for Professor Kweku? Um, so it would be good to get a response from you, Prof, and then we would go on to the next few couple of questions. Okay, right. That's a good one. So what we have done is that we have a performance management framework, which has been developed under the Ghana CARES program. Now, if you would recall, all the initiatives that we have within the context of the Ghana Integrated Digital Transformation Blueprint are being funded by the Ministry of Finance and money or resources will be provided for them. We actually have an office that has been set up to work with the Ministry of Finance in terms of implementation, monitoring, evaluation and capturing of performance based on agreed indicators. That's exactly what we'll be doing. And when we go back to the Ministry of Finance at the end of every quarter to ask for a top up or well, I wouldn't even call it a top up replenishment because we have undertaken our activities for the previous quarter. The performance management framework, which is a very serious document which has been developed, would serve as the basis for replenishment. So we do have a framework in place. We will be doing the monitoring and evaluation very closely, and we will be able to report on performance. Thank you. OK, thank you so much, Prof, for that um, answer. Thank you so much, Prof. Um, I will now ask Richard a question, um, Richard Dutchery Fosu from NITA. Um, the question here says, how can UK companies who are experts in digital technology compete for opportunities in Ghana? Um, Richard, I'll take that question again. How can UK companies who are experts in digital technology compete for opportunities in Ghana? Um, Kwame, the next question is to you, but we would get a response from Richard first. Richard. So, so thank you, Augustine, and, and thank you for your, 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 your viewers. Um, I, I mean, throughout the presentation that, that I gave, and I think Prof, Prof gave, uh, we've, we've sounded the, the, the call that Ghana is ready uh, to work with, um, you know, private partners, whether in-country, whether outside. We are ready. Um, the, the government has created this enabling environment, uh, and we've we've also teased out some of these opportunities that uh, that that are available. So therefore, um, you know, any 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 company in the UK that's willing to work in in this area uh, should should get in touch. Um, we've also made doing business in Ghana uh, quite straightforward now as well. So. Um, I, I think I think Ghana is ready, and uh, the, if it's technology, they can also reach out to us, and uh, we'll be willing to assist them. Yeah. All right. Thank you, thank you, Richard, for that um, answer. Um, I'll now go to Kwame's question. Um, Kwame, the question here says: Is there scope for UK companies to show to support with the implementation of your project? Um, is there scope for UK companies to support with the implementation of your project and um, how can they do this? Kwame? 
absolutely as i initially stated i mean it's built on a think of it as a lego platform where we can pick and choose who to work with depending on the need and the requirement so if there's a uk co um, company for instance in the area of global payment and they would want to integrate to make sure that we do that and um, we're happy to do that our ngos oxfam etc who are uk based that we could help with our platforms in the dissemination of information wherever they would want to use this be it in the refugee camps we don't have any yet but if they are doing poverty eradication programs or on the hunger project for instance these are people that we can always do. so we are, we are open if anyone has an API that is suitable and thinks that it can be overlaid on our platform as a last mile, our doors are always open. I mean, thank you so much for that answer. Uh, there's another question here, I think that's directed to you, Prof. Um, it says, to what extent will um, government of Ghana's digitalization agenda be economically feasible? To what extent will this be economically feasible? So I think essentially they, the the participant wants to know what are the economic gains, you know, from from government and third digitalization strategy. Prof. Thank you. I think there are various figures that we have started noticing. If you take Ghana.gov, for example, we've been able to do business worth about 20 billion. Ghana CDs over the last, let's say, nine months or so. Richard would have the exact figures. But if you take the fact that government is doing business, uh, there is a lot of money that is passing through the formal system. Companies and individuals are paying their taxes. We are able to collect taxes and duties at the ports. We are able to provide services for people who need uh, licenses, passports. Very soon it's going to be land registration, registering businesses. And the fact that based on the agenda that we have, we've actually gone through the process of ensuring that legislation has been put in place to increase some of the fees that we charge. When I say we charge government charges for the services we render. If you need a passport like yesterday, as we would say, you can pay a premium and we will give you a 24 hour service or an express service. The same applies to vehicle licensing. The same applies to registering a business. So we, we have been able to introduce differentiation in terms of pricing for services that are offered to the citizens. Just by doing, doing this, we are able to rake in a lot more in terms of revenue compared to the past. In the past, somebody would go to the tax office wanting to pay their taxes between 12.30 and 2 o'clock, and they will be told that it is break time. Therefore, the of officials are not available to collect your money. That's physical transaction. Now it's possible for me to sit in my office, possible for me to sit at home and pay my taxes. All these initiatives would mean enhanced revenue for government. So if you're looking at, as they call it, economic viability or business visibility for government in embarking on digitalization, I think very clear, it's very clear that we will be able to break even following investments that we make once we make the investments at the right levels in the right direction there is no doubt at all that the citizens are going to benefit in terms of service provision and government is going to benefit in terms of revenue mobilization that's what i right. have to say now the other one that i'll end with is that if you look at productivity that's also another angle where we stand to benefit tremendously by way of productivity in terms of what we do as a people and as a government. Thank you. Over. All right. Um, Prof, thank you so much for your response. Um, thanks again, Prof. Um, Richard, I was wondering if you had something brief to add to this. 
Um, any any comments from you on, on this specific question, Richard? Thank you, Augustine. So I think Prof Prof had looked at the the benefit to government in terms of revenues to government. Uh, and he touched his last statement was on productivity. Uh, so again, government also, I mentioned it in my presentation, government during the lockdown and the COVID uh, instituted a program, a virtual uh, workspace uh, for government institutions to work from home. So trust me, during the lockdown, government institutions were working. Again, that, that, that showed the level of productivity that we garnered during that time. So that's what I would like to add to it. Uh, and um, I mean, one thing is very clear. Once you digitize and once you change mindset and people are doing what they are following the rules, uh, you know, we, we, the, the benefits are very clear. Thank you. All right, um, Richard, thank you so much for, for your comments as well. Um, so we are just about to wrap up. Uh, um, a quick reminder that you can pop in your questions. Uh, we've got just a few minutes left, but I can take one or two more questions. Um, before I do that, um, I would want to apologize um, on behalf of Mr. Gessin Blay. Um, for some reasons beyond his control, um, he wasn't able to join us for today's webinar. So um, sincere apologies. But the great thing is, uh, Pro Professor Kweku has been able to touch on all the key points that um, Augustine was um, aiming to speak to us on. So that's really good and um, just to assure you that you haven't really missed anything um, from um, him not being here. Um, I will ask Kwame for quick comments and final wrap up from Kwame. Um, before I go to you Kwame, um, another reminder that you can send us your questions um, if you have any in inquiries for the Department for International Trade. You can send us an email to dit.africa at fco.gov.uk. I'll take that email address again, dit.africa at fco.gov.uk. We'll take final comments from um, Kwame um, and then we'll be aiming to wrap up. Kwame. All right, thank you very much, Augustine. So um, the final words from me will be that um, from the private sector, and, and this is um, from the Vodafone angle of things, We've seen that we have to, it's a must, we can't be spectators, we need to support government initiatives and how to improve ourselves and digital is the way. And since we have the last mile of mobile connectivity, we can get anywhere, everywhere we need to be. We need to support that with whatever products that we develop to make sure that as a whole, we move forward um, as a country. And it is, we're glad that the United Kingdom, UK to be precise, is also supporting um, this function. So we are ready to push. It's going to be private and public partnerships. We're ready to help and make this happen. All right. Thank you so much, Kwame. Um, I think that's essentially all that time will allow us for. Um, it has been a good um, discussion. Um, and my sincere thanks again to Professor Kweku Apiedu um, from the Vice President's Office um, here in Ghana. Um, and, and then also to Richard Otri Fosu, who is the Director General at the National Information Technology Agency here in Accra, Ghana. Um, Kwame, thank you also so much. Um, Kwame, our, our presenter from Vodafone. Um, I think from the UK government's perspective, we have always shown how keen we are to support with, you know, government of Ghana's digitalization agenda. And um, this is just one way of showcasing how the UK's private sector is ready to engage with you. Um, I've received a lot of um, comments um, on, on my phone and via email on how a number of companies um, watching this are quite keen to engage with, with the government. So um, Prof and Richard, we will be um, touching base with you again. This definitely wouldn't be the end of it. And we will be engaging with you much more strongly with um, the UK's private sector um, now coming um, on board. And um, to our viewers, thanks so much for making time for this webinar. Please do get in touch with us via email. I'll take that email address again dit.africa at fco.gov.uk and kindly follow us on our social media channels so you can be updated on when next we will be having another webinar. Thank you all so much for today and do have a good day.